big stories and breaking news first. This is KC24 News at 6, Central Valley's news station. I think the initial reaction of people that view this video will be one of um, disbelief. It will be one uh, that in some cases may shock individuals. Our top story, another possible black eye for the Fresno Police Department as video surfaces. Chief Jerry Dyer responds to video obtained exclusively by KC24 News showing two officers violently arresting a homeless man. Good evening, I'm John Brent. And I'm Stephanie Berugi, and thanks for being with us. The Fresno Police Chief has launched an investigation after the release of the video. Carolyn Bruck joins us now with the story. Carolyn. Thank you. This video is disturbing. When we showed it to the police chief, he immediately launched this investigation. I just try to record everything that doesn't make sense. Um, this didn't make any sense here. Monday morning, just before 10, this video was recorded. Why is he shocking him like that? Tuesday, the person behind the camera handed the tape over to KC24 News. And with that, began an internal investigation of the two Fresno police officers seen here. And they grabbed him and threw him to the ground. I saw him being brutally beaten because he didn't want to listen to them. In the matter of seconds, the man, 52-year-old Glenn Beatty, is hit four times in the face. Even when Beatty appears to be partially restrained with one hand behind his back, the officer strikes him again. The video then shows what appears to be the last blow. This time, both of Beatty's hands are behind his back. I don't think anybody should be beat like that. They don't beat dogs and let you get away with it. KC24 News showed Police Chief Jerry Dyer the footage. I think the initial reaction of people that view this video will be one of um, disbelief. It will be one uh, that in some cases may shock individuals. Uh, one that causes concern in terms of the level of force being used. Dyer says what is not on the tape could be most important the eight or so minutes before the recording began. The individual was stiff. Uh, there was alcohol around him. It was very apparent that he had been drinking uh, excessively. And when the officers contacted uh, the individual, uh, there was resistance in terms of the line of questioning. The individual refused to answer certain questions. And at some point, there was an altercation that occurred between the suspect and the officers. At one point, uh, the officers, uh, one of the officers was punched by the suspect in the arm. Uh, the officer had his badge ripped off of his shirt. Dyer's account is directly taken from the police report. The report the two officers involved wrote themselves. The shooter, who admits to not being on the scene when officers first approach Beatty, has a different take. Before the camera went on, I saw him. He had already uh, pulled his body away from the tree a little bit and started trying to keep them from grabbing his arms. And When they did get hold of his arms, they spun him around and put him on the ground and started socking him. Even though an ambulance was called and used to take Beatty to the hospital, officers on scene did not gather any witness statements. Chief Dyer says that will be done now. What is important to us, though, is to allow all of the evidence to be brought into this case, any witness statements, uh, all the actions that led up to the video being taken before an official opinion is formed. Because I don't think anybody deserves to be beat like that, even if they are being arrested. Now, Police Chief Jerry Dyer does say that Beatty has what he calls a history of violence. Late this afternoon, the police department did fax over a police report from 2004 where it shows that Beatty got into a violent confrontation with a sheriff's deputy who was responding to a disturbance at his parents' house. That police report does say that Beatty hit this sheriff's deputy over the head with a flashlight. John and Steph, back to you.